let's dive in. So Fluid FM uh, and its biological applications are going to be my uh, main topic to give a few biological use cases, how we use this technology and what is really the, the powerful applications. So Fluid FM means fluidic force microscopy. So as you can see, it's similar to atomic force microscopy, but um, we took a fluidic uh, approach to this technology. And it is really geared towards single cell manipulation. So the microscopy part is much less, um, uh, in, so that is not that important. The more important part is really uh, how the fluidic uh, components interact with cells. And the basic idea is very uh, easy to understand. We have basically an AFM cantilever that has a microfluidic channel inside of it that goes through all the way from the tip to uh, a reservoir, which is connected to a microfluidic pressure controller somewhere there in the back. And this reservoir can be filled in with uh, one microliters of sample liquid that is different uh, depending on the different applications that uh, we can do. Um, and on the other side of this channel, uh, as I mentioned, it goes all the way to the tip. And at the tip, there is always an aperture. So this is an open-ended channel where we can either push liquids in or take push liquids out or take liquids in. So the microfluidic pressure controller up here uh, is modula modulating the pressure either in positive or negative range. And this really simple idea, so just to put this microfluidic channel uh, inside of the cantilever, um, opens up a whole new world of possibilities when it comes to single cell manipulations. And here at the tip, it is very important uh, what happens there because that's where the interaction with the cells uh, is really happening. And that is largely determined by the geometry of these tips. And these are the basic types that you can see here. Uh, from left to right, we have what we call a micropipette. And you can see that it's just a completely flat aperture uh, with a circular aperture at the end. So a flat cantilever with circular pattern. And you can already imagine that uh, taking EFM images uh, per se is not possible with these probes. These are really geared for single cell manipulations. And what we can do with these micropipettes is really to pick up cells uh, with a negative pressure and then release them somewhere else. So this is what we call a pick and place application. So we can really pick up cells, put them somewhere else. Or uh, while we pick up the cells, we can uh, measure force curves that I will mention later on. Then uh, in the middle, we can see the fluid FM nanos range, which is um, the, the type that we use the most uh, in, in the most cutting edge applications. And what this is, is really just what it says. It's a syringe that we can use to pierce a cell's membrane, either just the cell membrane or also the cell membrane and the nuclear membrane. And once we pierce the cell's membrane, we uh, can have this aperture inside of the cell. So this aperture is around 600 nanometers uh, in the largest uh, dimension. And once this aperture is in the cell, we can use a positive pressure to deposit material into the cell, or we can use a negative pressure to take samples from the cell. So the first one would be just a, an injection, and the second one is uh, either sampling or as I will describe in more detail, we call this now a single cell biopsy. Um, and other than these two things, we can also have fluid from nanopipettes, which is a little bit the combination of the two. So we have a pyramidal tip similar to the nanostringe. Uh, however, instead of the aperture being on the side, it is really at the tip of this pyramid. And this you can use to pick up smaller cells. So these bigger apertures. So you can imagine this is more geared towards uh, eukaryotic cells. And uh, in the nanopipette, this is more uh, for picking up bacteria or even to create um, patterns on surfaces so we can push out certain liquids on, on surfaces. So I would like to mention a few of the biological uh, applications that we've been working on, and also our users have been working on. Um, this whole fluid FM word really grew out of mechanobiology. That's what also I was doing. So we can uh, pick up cells, a so single cells for spectroscopy uh, is made much easier by fluid FM, as I will also mention later on. But these days we can also um, do a lot in terms of single cell omics and even CRISPR cell engineering. So as you can see, we are really moving towards more molecular biology fields, but 
uh, if you take a look at publications with Fluid FM, then there are all kinds of fields um, affected, neuroscience, um, virology, and we have very nice uh, nano patterning uh, concepts. So let's go into the first topic, which is single cell omics, or more exactly transcriptomics. And the basic idea here is that uh, in single cell analysis, it is generally a, a problem or a feature that when we want to analyze a single cell, then we have to lyse the cell to access the contents inside. This is what happened with RNA sequencing or, or metabolomics, all kinds of research that is really looking into the molecular uh, composition of the cytoplasm. Uh, the first step of the analysis is always destroying the cell. And the idea here behind fluid FM, what, what fluid FM can bring to the table, is to probe a cell cytoplasm in a non-destructive way. So what that means or how that's achieved is what we call a single cell biopsy. And here biopsy really means that we take the biopsy from the cell uh, itself. So we can go into the cytoplasm with this nanostringe and with a negative pressure, literally take out some part of the cytoplasm. And this part is around one or two picoliters that amounts to, well, depending on the size of the cell, anything between 20 to even 70% of the cell's entire cytoplasmic volume. And this sounds a little bit brutal, especially for 70%, but uh, as it turns out, depending on the cell type, the viability, so the survival of the cells after this operation is at least 85%. So the cells will not be uh, killed by this operation, which is really the point that we can take the cytoplasm and then analyze the cytoplasm with the biopsy instead of the cell. And you can see the little video of how that works on a fluorescent cytoplasm, although it doesn't have to be fluorescent, but it's just the video is nicer. You can pierce the cell with a nanostringe, and now it starts. And then with the negative pressure, you can see that the cytoplasm enters into this channel. And what you can also see is that there is this nice and clear interface between the cytoplasm and the channel that is forming up there and that is because in these cases the channel is filled with a mineral oil and the point of that uh, of course is that then the cytoplasm is not going to mix with whatever is in the channel this very small one or two picoliters um, is a valuable sample so we don't want to dilute <clears throat> at least not at this stage and Multiple cell types have already been tested, uh, mostly cancer cells, uh, but also some stem cells even. And uh, it, it seems that for any cell type, we can always find parameters that are gentle enough. Um, there is, of course, the other question that uh, even if the viability is high, um, which is even comparable to like a conventional trypsin-based dissociation, so even uh, in a more traditional single cell analysis, first step, we always have some loss. 